From food, clean water and flood protection to cultural heritage and a sense of place in the world, ecosystems provide essential benefits or services to us all. These benefits are as diverse as they are numerous and are categorised into the type of service they provide. From provisioning services like those from plants, to regulating services like those provided by wetlands and pollination of crops. Then there are supporting services which underpin all other services. And finally, there are cultural services, such as valuable benefits of spending time in nature. For much of recent human history, these ecosystem services have been overlooked while increasing human pressures are threatening these vital systems. Across the world, fish stocks are overexploited Air pollution is an increasing problem. Vast areas of tropical forests are destroyed. Tons of soil are eroded each year. Globally, the ecosystems we rely on are under threat, with 60% experiencing worrying declines. So how can we protect these services for future generations? Decades of research and practice show that rich biodiversity is fundamental for healthy ecosystems. So the question is, can the ecosystem service approach help protect biodiversity? Let's look at a real world example. Imagine a national policy to plant 15,000 hectares of new woodland in the UK. If we only consider the market value of timber, the cost of planting this forest would appear to outweigh the benefit. So the project might not go ahead. But this may be a good thing, as planting would be on the cheapest upland areas, which produce a lot of currently unvalued services, such as water storage and purification. If, however, we included in our calculations all those other benefits that trees provide for us, we might cite trees in lowlands where these benefits could be optimised, which will increase overall costs by displacing profitable farmland, but which can return far greater benefits. In this situation, the usefulness of this approach is clear. However, monetary value is only one tool in the ecosystem services toolbox. And making one service more productive, increasing its monetary value, doesn't necessarily mean that other services will flourish or that biodiversity will be protected. If we think of a large area of land growing strawberries, in monetary terms, the service and value is high, but overall biodiversity is low. What's more, genetically identical crops are less able to adapt and so are more vulnerable to diseases, pests and a changing climate. And sometimes we don't realise the true value a certain species may have. If we think of the common snowdrop found throughout Europe, but now on the near-threatened IUCN red list, Recently, it has been found to contain an alkaloid approved for treatment of Alzheimer's disease and its effects against HIV are also being studied. But what about those benefits which do not have a monetary market value? It seems impossible to quantify the intrinsic values of nature, such as a feeling of seeing and hearing wild birds. However, Two approaches used to account for less readily monetized values include revealed preference. If we look at the typical purchases of a bird watcher, the costs of the associated things they spend money on can provide a monetary approximation of the way the service is valued. Then there is stated preference. For example, we might use willingness to pay methods, surveying people about how much they would be willing to pay to create a particular ecosystem or how much compensation they would be willing to accept for its loss. However, this assumes that all these values are preformed in people's minds and that societally shared values are a simple aggregation of personal preferences. We know that neither of these assumptions is true, so other techniques are needed to capture more deeply held values. Monetary valuation is not an open door to commodify and degrade nature. It is not a perfect picture, but it is one way to insert non-economic values into the decision-making system. 
but there remains an essential difference between price and value. Crude money equivalents cannot capture the range of human values or the significance of non-marketed services, so informed judgment is always required to make robust and equitable decisions. Ecosystem services can work alongside other tools to prioritise resources, raise awareness of the substantial benefits provided by ecosystems, and create a common language to protect biodiversity and the many human benefits that stem from it, ensuring future wealth and abundance beyond mere monetary terms.